Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we are going to discuss classes and inheritance in JavaScript. Before we begin, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. In the previous video, we came across inheritance in JavaScript, right? I hope you guys must have understood the actual meaning of inheritance and why we use it. So the syntax for inheritance before the introduction of ES6, that is ECMAScript 6, was quite complex or we can say it was long, right? We saw how much we have to do while inheriting a constructor from another one. Like we have to set the prototype manually and also we have to set the constructor manually. But when classes were introduced in ES6, the syntax has been changed. It's easy to use now. We will go through it in today's video. So let's move on and take a look at classes in JavaScript. A class is nothing but a template used for creating objects in JavaScript. Just like the constructor function, we can also use classes for creating object in JavaScript. We can include properties and behaviors in a class. Creating a class is a pretty easy job to do. The syntax is somewhat the same as that of a constructor function. So let's move on to the programming part. If you guys are coming from any other object oriented programming language like we have C++, Java, PHP and many more object oriented programming language, right? So you may have an idea about classes. The syntax for classes in JavaScript is also not so different from other languages. Don't worry if you are going through classes for the first time. We'll have a look at classes. So let's move on to the syntax. And to declare a class, we use the class keyword followed by the name of the class and the body of the class. So we'll write here class. So this is the keyword we use for the declaration of a class. Then we have the name of the class. So let's say we have the name as student here. And then we use curly braces for the body of the class. So this is an empty class named as student. We know that this student has a name, age, roll number and many more properties, right? So the next thing we are going to do is we can define the properties here only. In fact, the syntax for defining properties is also the same as we had in the constructor function. So let's define the properties first. So let's say we have three properties here, name, age and roll number. So we'll write here this dot name is equals to name. And then we have this dot age is equals to age. And the last property is this dot role number. So let's say we are writing here role. So equals to role. So we have all the three properties of student. We have name, age and roll number. So we have to create a constructor here, which will be executed while we create an object or we can say an instance of this class. So the syntax for creating a constructor will go like, we have to write here constructor and we have to pass all these three arguments here. We have to pass name, then we have age and then we have a roll number. So all these three arguments we have to pass here and also these properties will be kept inside the body of this constructor. So this is the basic syntax of how we are going to create a class in JavaScript. So we have all the three properties here. We have name, we have age and we have roll number. If you guys notice here, the syntax for the constructor function looks a bit similar to the syntax of the constructor function method, which we came across in the previous few videos, right? So what we are doing is we created a class first with the name student. Then we defined all the properties of this class inside the constructor. So by now things are going easy, right? That's because the syntax for classes is relatively easy to use compared to other methods. Also, we don't have to write code manually for different things. We will understand it much better while working on inheritance. So let's move on and we will add some methods to this class now. The syntax for adding a method is super simple guys. We don't have to write here a function name followed by a colon and then we have the function keyword. No, we'll just write here the function name and parenthesis. So to add a method here, we'll write here, let's say we are adding a method organization. So let's say we have a method org. Okay. So we have to write org and a pair of round brackets. 
that's all this is the syntax for defining a method in classes so let's say we want this function to return a string along with the name of the student so let's say we are writing a return and let's say we want it to return i am dot name from simply code okay so let's say we are passing a value here as Caution, and we want this function to return I am caution from simply code. So similarly, we'll add another function here, which is for the date of birth of student. So let's see. We'll write here dob, and then we have the body of the function. So we want this function to return the date of birth of a student, right? So let's say we are in the year 2020. what we want to do is we have the age of student let's say the age is 21 and what we are going to do next is we are going to subtract the age from current year so 2020 minus this dot age will return the date of birth of student right so we'll write here return let's say we want it to return a string as well let's say the date of birth of this dot name is 2020 minus this dot age fine so here we are done with our string so we want it to return the date of birth of kaushal is let's say 1999 if we are providing the value as 21 then it will return 1999 right Let's move ahead and create an object first. So let's say we have an object named as Kaushal, and what we are going to do is we are going to write here new, and we are going to call the class. So we'll write here student, and then we'll pass the values here. So let's say the name is Kaushal, the age is twenty one, and we have roll number as forty five. So we have all the three properties here, right? Next up, we are going to print this on a console so we'll write here console dot log and we'll print caution so let's say if it's working or not save it and here you can see on our console we have a student class we have all the three values we have age as 21 name as caution and roll number as 45 if we go inside this underscore underscore proto we can see here we have both the methods here we have org and dob so let's try to call these methods first So what we are going to do is we are going to write on our console caution dot dub. So here you can see we have the output as the date of birth of caution is 1999. Similarly, if we try to call function caution dot org, so you can see here we have the output as I am caution from simply code, right? So here you can see both the methods are working fine. We have both the outputs here. The first one says the date of birth of Kaushal is 1999 and the next one gives us the organization name. So moving ahead, let me guys tell you about another concept in classes. We'll now discuss static functions in classes. We have to use the static keyword to define a static method followed by the method name. So if we want to define a static method what we have to do is we have to use the static keyword. So the static keyword is always followed by the name of the method. So let's say we are creating a method here. Let's say for adding two numbers. So we'll write here the method name is add and then we have the body of this method. So what we want to do is we want to add two numbers, right? So we have to pass here two parameters as well. We'll write here a comma b, and then we want it to return the sum, right? So we'll write here return a plus b. This looks fine, right? Notice here, guys, we don't have to use anything from the class or the object. Like in the previous two methods, we used the name and the age property right so here we used this dot name and then we used this dot age as well but here this method is not related to object at any cost the best part about the static method is we can use static methods without creating the instances of a class so if we want to access this particular method here we can do it with the help of class name 
followed by the dot operator and the method name. So let's try to access this method once. What we are going to do is we are going to write console.log and we are going to access this method with the class name. So we'll write here student.add and we'll pass the values here. So let's say we are passing 10 and 45. Fine. So let's see if it works or not. So save it. And here you can see we have the output as 55. So this is how we can create or use static methods in classes. Let's move on now and we will discuss inheritance with the help of classes in JavaScript. By now we are clear with the meaning of inheritance, right guys? We discussed in the last video that inheritance is the procedure through which one class inherits the properties and methods of another class. So today we are going to see how we can implement inheritance with classes in JavaScript. Although the concept will remain the same, we will create another class here and will inherit the properties of this existing class with some more properties of the derived class. I hope you guys know the difference between base class and derived class. So the class we are going to create now will be the derived class. So let's move ahead and create a class. Let's say we are creating a class here. So let's say for creating a class we have to write class. Let's say the class name is student. And if we want to inherit the properties of the above class, which is student one, we have to use a particular syntax. So we have to write the extents keyword here. So this is a keyword extents is a keyword which is used for inheritance. And then we will write the name of the class which we want to inherit. So we'll write here student. And then we have the body of the class. Here we have a class student1 that inherits the properties of class student. Next up, we'll create a constructor function here and we'll pass all the properties we want to be there for the class student1. So we'll pass the constructor function similarly like we did in the previous class. So we'll write here constructor and we'll pass all the properties we want to be there for class student1. So we have the first three properties are name which we are going to inherit from the above class. Then we have age and then we have roll number, right? So let's add two more properties here. Let's say the two properties are language and then we have section as well. Fine. So then we have the body of the constructor. So you can see here we have five properties. Three of these five are inherited from class student and the rest two are those properties that we want to add for class student one exclusively. The syntax for inheritance in classes is not a tough one though. Still we have to keep a few things in mind. Mainly the next statement we are going to write here is an important one. It goes like we use the super keyword and then we'll pass all the properties which we want to inherit from the class. In this particular case, we want to inherit these three properties here, right? So we'll copy this from here and we'll paste it here. Remember one thing guys, we'll write only those properties which we want to inherit from other class. Actually this super keyword we used here refers to the parent class. We use it to call the parent classes constructor or we can also call particular properties and methods with the help of super keyword. Next up, we'll define the two new properties, the language and the section now. So the syntax will remain the same. We'll write here this dot language is equals to language. And then we'll write this dot section is equal to section. We are good to go now. We'll create an object for this class as well, which is student one. So let's say we are creating an object again. Let's say the name of this object is, let's remove it first. So let's say we are creating an object for this class now. Let's say the name of this object is Arun and we are going to write here new. Then we have the class name which is student1 and then we'll pass the values here. So let's say the name is Arun. Then we have the age is 35 and then we have roll number as 3 or 2. And then we have the language. So let's say the language is JavaScript. And then we finally have the section as well. So let's say the section is A. 
fine so we have all the five values here we have arun 35 2 javascript and a right so let's print this on our console we'll write here console.log and we'll print arun let's save it now and here you can see we have a student one with all the properties and values we have age is 35 language javascript name is arun roll number s2 and section is a if we click here on underscore underscore proto you can see here we have a constructor student one along with that we have all the methods of the previous class of the base class we have org we have dob as well right so this is how inheritance work in JavaScript. The key benefit of using inheritance with classes is that if we remember from the previous video, if we want to access any base class method, then traditionally we had to manually provide the constructor, right? But in classes, we don't have to do any such thing. Once we are done with inheriting the properties and all, we can directly access the methods as well. Let's try to do it here on a console. So we'll write here arun dot let's suppose we are using org so we'll write here arun.org and here you can see we have the output as i am arun from simply code next up let's use the other method as well so we'll write here arun and then we'll use dub so here you can see we have the date of birth of Arun is 1985 because we have provided the value as 35. So 2020 minus 35 is 1985. Here we have the output as expected. Now let's see if we can access the static method or not by using the derived class. So we'll try to access the static method with the help of student one. So let's try to do it. We'll write here console.log and then we'll write here student one dot add and we'll pass the values let's say the values are 65 and 8 right so we want the output as 73 now so let's see if it's working or not so we'll save it and here you can see we have the output as 73 so this is a basic example of how inheritance works with classes in javascript hope you guys got it so that's all for this video guys see you in the next one where we will go through dom manipulation in javascript if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts do let us know in the comments below share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe simply code thank you